Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got three replays in the Japanese tier 10 tech tree medium tank, the STB-1. Now, if you do enjoy the video, as always, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe down below, as it really does help out the channel. And yes, the STB-1. I think the last time I did a video on this tank was probably 6.0, or should I say in the weeks after 6.0. And that, I think I called it the best tier 10 medium tank at that point. And that's because, basically, apart from the siege mode, because this thing gets automatic siege mode, which can make this tank so clunky to use, right? Apart from that, it basically, there was two big things about this tank. One, the de apart from the automatic siege mode, one was that the gun handling was atrocious and not helped at all by the siege mode, but even before they added the hydropneumatic siege suspension to this tank, the gun handling was still atrocious on the SDB-1. But that was because one of its strengths was the fact that it was the highest DPM medium tank. Like, that, it, how fast it fired for 390 Alpha is mental. It, it fires very, very quickly. So, when 6.0 came along, we had the new crew skills and stuff like that, and the equipment, etc. The gun handling was just basically nullified. You still had to put with the clunky suspension and how annoying it is. But at the same time, the gun handling was nullified, which meant that you had a medium tank which just had absolutely nutty DPM. And it absolutely shredded... I mean, you see in here with the food boost, we've got a 5.3 second reload, which is absolutely mental. It fires so, so quickly. Like, you, you, if you catch someone out, they are dead in the blink of an eye. Like, they get absolutely shredded. I mean, 5.7 second reload is still a beautiful thing. But then they've buffed lots of the medium tanks throughout the years since. And because this tank's DPM is still really high, and I still think it's one of the highest at tier 10, it still gets overshadowed by the fact that there's now, instead of being a 5.7 second reload on this tank and all the others were like 6.5 to 7 seconds, it's now that a lot of them are 6 to 6.5 six second reload, so that 0.3 of a reload is not as special when you consider that the gun and the tank in general is very, very clunky. And you're going to see that in these two maybe even three replays that you do have to fight the gun and you've just seen the bubble that happens there you have to fight that clunky siege mode and it feels like you're always fighting it you're not just ready to go you're not just ready to snap the shot the the tank just says no nah, i'm just gonna bubble and miss because lol why not and it, it's just a bit frustrating to deal with which is why this tank is missed out by a lot of people and a lot of people don't play it it's one of those that i do kind of wish that they'd add a package on the suspension like they did add a suspension like, you know, the trap modules that you can pick. They added a suspension module on there that's, like, lets you not have the hydropneumatic suspension and goes back to the original, I think it was 9 degrees of gun depression that this tank got without it, you know, and you don't have the bobbly suspension and the bad gun handling that come with the bobbly suspension. Or I should say bad gun handling. It's not too bad, but you get my point. So, yeah, the STB-1, though, it has 258 APCR pen, which is really quite nice for the tank, which has a velocity of 1478 meters a second. You've got 330 heat pen, which again is beautiful, and we'll go through everything you're going to face. Obviously, you've got that phenomenal DPM. You've got 2.12 second aim time with this build that I have, which is 2.3 seconds base. And the accuracy during rotation and movement is 1.74 during movement and 1.12 during rotation with the build I've got, which is really not very good, even with all the equipment and crew skills. And then you've got also that 53 kilometer an hour top speed, which means you're not the fastest medium tank in the universe, but you're also, you're in the average range, right? I always think that if you're a medium tank and you've got between 49 to 55 kilometers an hour, I say 49 because this is because some tanks are 49. 49 to 55 kilometers an hour, you're, you're in the average range for mobility, and that's what the, the STB is definitely in. And then with the build that I've got, you've got 525 meters of view range as well, which is definitely very, very nice. So what do I run in terms of a crew on the STB one? Well, I run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, six Sense, Trap Mechanic, Situational Awareness, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Run and Gun, Camouflage Expertise. Camouflage Expertise, because I'm making the camo just that little bit better, because you do have 326 meters of steel concealment with this build. The run and gun steady aim and snapshot because, yeah, th this gun is really derpy. You really want to help it out as much as you humanly can do. Situational awareness to spot for yourself and the other four perks are generally what you get. Well, you're going to take most of those perks on every other tank anyway. I mean, you could drop trap mechanic if you want to and run something else like rapid aim to make the turret traverse better or run 
any of the other camo perks like silent driving, muffled shot. You know, it's down to you and how you want to play the tank. That's just my basic template crew, really, for a medium tank that wants to make its gun handling as good as possible, but also make get a little bit better on the camo front as well. And then in terms of equipment, I run the advanced loader, the gun stabilizer, and optics. Optics to be able to spot for myself. The gun stabilizer, because like I say, this gun is atrocious, so I want to make it as good as possible. And the gun, lo the advanced loader to make my DPM even better, because the DPM on this tank is nutty, and it's something that you want to just take advantage of if you can, because it is one of the strengths. So this first replay, you can see, we managed to acquire 6.2k damage. We've got four kills here on Duckler Pass, and... Yeah, we had a good little run around. We finished with the first class, the high caliber, the sniper medal, 1547 at base XP. That was one of those games where you got to see what the STB wants to be doing. It wants to be flanking, it wants to be using this amazing DPM to its advantage, keep smashing out the rounds, and then try and keep yourself in an avoidance of being the main focus of people's attention while on a ridge line. Because while they can get onto a ridge line and snap shots at you easily, you have to wait for the suspension to activate, and then you get stuck in the awkward situation of having the bobble, having the gun miss, or you've just got to wait for the gun to stabilize to actually be able to shoot which is where the hydro pneumatic suspension is really frustrating in general so we're on to the second replay and the second replay we are on this map which is overlord don't go to the beach on overlord it's a bad time kids and we are going to go to this middle area here at E6 because we can shoot into the middle of the map and we can also shoot people that go across the 5-6 line. So we get a nice shot snapped in there to the M60 who's crossing in the middle. And you can just hear every time we're dropping below the certain speed, our siege mode is activating all the time. And now we're on a ridge line that is a little bit awkward. We got the gun depression through our suspension and the gun bobbled. The gun bobbled, so instead of shooting the nice juicy side of that E4, we actually shot his mantlet because the gun bobbled upwards and thus we did it. And that's probably because, and the one thing that's a big, oh, we bobbled again so we missed that guy. In fact, we actually bounced. But yeah, that's because the suspension is more likely to bobble and you won't realise when you're doing it as well. If your gun starts to aim over to the left or right of your tracks, your suspension will start to auto-adjust for where you're aiming and try and give you the best gun depression it can, which is what causes the bubble. If you're looking straight over the front of your tank, that completely eliminates it for the most part. I mean, it still doesn't, right? But as soon as you're looking over the side of your tank for gun depression over the sides on a ridge line, that's where your bubble will start to come into play and it's not going to be a good time. You're going to just be really frustrated, to be honest. So we managed to get a nice shot snapped into the 5120. We're just looking for the shot into the drive wheel of the STRVK, which goes in, but we don't track and pen that guy. And now we're just watching what's going on behind us. There's an MBTB coming in behind, and the object 430 version 2 is currently caught out in the open. So we're going to try and get here to help him if we can. We've just got to slow down so our suspension activates and we don't get that annoying gun bobble. We track and pen the MBTB in place, which actually breaks his Amarak as well. Then the 5120 comes around and unfortunately again, we sort of bobble upwards so we miss the slim shot on the 5120 and he gets away with it. Again, it's just something that happens when you have slim shots like that and the, the siege mode keeps activating, deactivating. It just it causes that irritating moment where it just goes and miss. And you go cool because it feels like the gun lags behind a little bit as opposed to well you can see it with the, the hydro pneumatic suspension tanks and it's just like this that the gun is free of the camera normally the, the the gun is locked to the camera or the aim circle of the gun is locked to your camera and where you're looking but with these hydro pneumatic suspension tanks it's not and the reason for that is because what you're supposed to do to activate the suspension if you want to get onto a ridge line and have the full gun depression before you get to the ridge line all you've got to do is go into the aim You've got to go into the first person name and look down as far as you can and that'll activate, that'll basically make the suspension make you get the best gun depression you can get. Which is one thing that you can do again to try and alleviate the bobble, but then you've got to lock it in place and it's just really, really awkward to be able to do that and to be able to get the most out of that gun depression and thus eliminate the bobble. It's just really awkward, it's really, really awkward. So, the 5120 gets shut down by the Ramatile Panzerwagen. There's a Turan at the back that we do have to be very, very careful of because we do not want to get shut down by that guy. We've won the beach, and we know there's an Object 257 behind us. So, we're just going to activate our suspension again. I say activate. We're waiting because it's automatic. We're just waiting for it to activate. Now, we're above this 257. We're putting shots into him. I'm not 100% confident on the... I'm not 100% confident 
on the turret armor on the STB-1 because it's really not that good. We try and get a shot into the roof deck of the 277, but it doesn't go in. But yeah, the, 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 uh, the armor on the turret of the STB-1 is troll, but it's not effective. Do not go... That's the other problem with the bobbly suspension and the fact that you have to wait for the gun to settle down and aim fully is the fact that... Because your turret armor isn't that good, most of the time if you poke over and have to take that split second to fire, you're more than likely going to end up taking the hit and your your turret will not bounce. It's still got angles, so there's still high chances that when you're on the ridge line, you're going back and forth, that you will ricochet shots off the turret front. But do not rely on it because it will not work when you rely on it. And that is definitely a very, very sad time in that regard. So this second game on Overlord, we managed to finish with the epic victory. Three kills, 6.1k damage, 1474 assistance. The first class, the high caliber, with the 1661 base XP. A pretty damn nice game there for the Japanese Tech Tree Tier 10 medium tank, the STB-1 on Overlord. And um, once again, that just showed the annoyance, to be honest, with the... That game was fighting the suspension. That really, really was. The amount of times that we were on those ridge lines and the gun was just going bobble, bobble, and we bounced two or three shots that we... If we were in any other medium tank, we would have penned. If we're honest, we would have penned any other medium tank with those shots that we were getting because our gun wouldn't have bobbled. We wouldn't have had the awkward moment where it hits a spot that it really just cannot penetrate. And then we go, oh, cool, like, nice. Like, I could, I could have just hit that guy but no I'm, I'm just not allowed to thank thanks for that gun and it's just something that i think a lot of people do not like will not enjoy and that's probably the reason you don't really see stb ones about if the like i say if it had a module that you could take the suspension off the stb one i reckon that you'd see a lot of these knocking about because you'd have although the gun handling is pretty atrocious you'd have that really nice dpm on a tank that's fairly mobile and has good gun depression at nine degrees without the suspension but yeah, we're on to the third replay. And the third replay, we are on this map, which is... What is it? It's a map. Pilsen! There we go, my brain. It's a good time. Goldfish braining is always a good time. So we're up to four, three shots of damage already in the first minute. And we're just working this ridge line. We're being careful because we do not want to get ruthless. But the 5120s just sat there going, Shoot me! Shoot! And we're we're just we're just we're going don't, we're getting there fifty one twenty don't worry son don't worry I'm coming for you later this ruthless is something that we've got to be careful of because naturally we do not want to get done by the ruthless it's going to be painful because you do not want one hundred eighty three millimeters of pain trust me it hurts so. We're playing Patience. There's the Ruthless. He pops out. He's again a gun that we wanted to get rid of. The E5 shuts him down, so that's good. We don't have 183 millimeters of pain staring at us. We get a shot into the side of the Tiger 2. And once again, this is where I'm saying, you know, the, the turret armor isn't bad on the STB-1. You just don't want to rely on it. Because we've ricocheted a shot or two, which is definitely good. We get a shot into the drive wheel of the chisel, which tracks him in place. And the E5 shuts him down. Looking for the shot now into the... Concept 1B, which we track in place. We couldn't track and pen him, which is sad. But again, this 5120 is side scraping like he has armor. No, Mr. 5120. No. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my friend. Your tank is poo, and we are here to get rid of you. Well, that rhymed. I'm a poet, and I just didn't know it. Anyway, we're looking for the Capola shot on the 5120, and there we go. Get out of the game, my friend. Sorry, but sorry, buddy. Just it, it's, a, it's a sad place for a 5120. We're now looking for the Capola shot on the Concept 1B, which with APCR, we're not we're not really going to go through because we'll probably ricochet trying to get that shot into this guy's Capola. Whereas with fire, fire Heat, we're more than likely going to go straight through. So that's exactly what we're doing. And it's not due to the pen. It's more due to just normalization and stuff like that. And the Heat goes straight through his Capola. Now we switch to HE because with HE, if we hit the right spot, we're probably going to kill this guy. And there he goes for 112. Ammo selection is key at big points. That Concept 1B was in a god position for his tank. But if I loaded Heat, there's every chance I could have gone through the turret. I could have also bounced. But most of the time I felt like I was going to go through the turret. So we loaded the Heat straight through his Capola. And again, because the Heat isn't a guarantee that it was ever going to do anything... We loaded the HE just to splash him. Even if it took one or two rounds, we're going to splash him and finish him off. And that's exactly what we did. It's all about choices and what you can do in certain situations. There's no point just, well, just smashing your head against the wall sometimes. It's, it's never going to work. 
So we're now getting up behind the MBTB, which, of course, the RNG says no. The gun ends up derping and hitting his tracks only. But we do get assistance from that tracking, and we get to finish him off with the second shell. There's now a TVP on the other side, which, again, I know I'm just going to absolutely shred this poor dude if I catch him out, because our DPM is absolutely nutty. The... TVP is the kind of tank that you want to just see. Obviously, it's a tier 8, I know, but it's the type of tank in the fact that it's got absolutely zero armor, not the best DPM, and you can just absolutely shred the poor guy and get rid of him. So we're up to 6,000. Oh, that's a satisfying number, isn't it? 6,000 on the dot. Whew. That's lovely to look at. Anyway, anyway, distracted by lovely shiny numbers. We're up to 6,000 damage. We're now going for the shots into these two guys on our left. What we're going to do is clear house. We're going to get rid of the Centauro and the Earthshaker and then move on to what is going on on the other side. So we get a shot there into the Earthshaker. We get shot from behind again though, which surprised me. I didn't think they'd quite get a shot at me. We missed a shot into that Earthshaker, but this Centauro is completely just ignoring us. It's like, uh, okay, Mr. Centauro. We try to go for the drive wheel shot, but unfortunately, he, it just doesn't get him and he pulls back around the corner so we can't quite get any shots at him now looking for shots into the AT-15's Capola from this distance you just saw the bobble again every time it bobbles as well it kind of resets your aim time a little bit which is also a little bit frustrating but we managed to get the shot into the AT-15's Capola at this distance and get rid of him and that's because you know on the SW1 with the build we've got the accuracy actually knocks down to a decent level, which is 0.29, which is really not, which is not really bad at all, if we're honest. But it's just the fact that you've got to wait for the aim time, you've got to wait for that bubble to sort itself out. That's where it can be really frustrating. So we're now going after the Leopard One. Now, of course, the Leopard One also has pretty damn nice DPM. So I don't, I don't want to go all in on this guy yet because it wouldn't be a smart play because I'd probably end up dying. So we're just trying to get... We've only got heat rounds left. We're just trying to get through this turret armor of the Leopard. And he breaks my gun, which is not the thing that we want from an STB-1. He gets shot in the back, though, which means he's now distracted. So let's go in and get some shots into him. We get one shot into the... S the leopard one side there just looking for the next shot in as we get it straight through tracks him in place waiting for the dpm because i want to shut that leopard down i don't want to get away but he does and it's like oh no that guy's looking at me i thought he'd be looking at the heavy tank charging after him but he's like nah you know what i'm just gonna shoot the sb1 and luckily that artillery did not kill us but we do manage to secure our top gun on that guy i'm thinking oh devastator Seven kills? Come on, let's go. But unfortunately, we are going to have to race the Type 61 to get to this Leopard. But the Type 61's going the other way. Ooh, seven kills, seven kills. Anyone say Devastator? Let's go. RBRT time. And we shut down the Leopard 1 with the RBRT. And we get our seventh kill of the game. A really fantastic game there for the STB1 on Pilsen. And we finish with the victory. Seven kills, 8.5k damage. The 1932 base XP, 1394 assistance from some tracking. The ace tanker, devastated top gun, confederate, high caliber. With the, yeah, that really nice base XP. A really nice game for the STB1. Like I say, if you can utilize the DPM, you can utilize the mobility of the tank, you'll have a lot of fun. But just the the suspension, the hydropneumatic suspension is such a pain that that bubble is... Oh, oh at times. It's really frustrating. It just makes it not as good as the other medium tanks in the role that you want to be playing with this DPM. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. A great success!